Hello, friends, and welcome to Figure Study, where we appreciate the style of Sentai. Today, I'm finally getting around to taking a look at everything that I've got from the Tokuger toy line. And that includes, assuming I can get the names right, uh, Tokuo, Dieselo, and way in the back there, Build Dio. This is quite the thing. <laughs> it's just, just, it's a lot of trains. Gonna get the size stuff out of the way right now while got everything set up here. So bring in our Titans Return Deluxe. Can just kind of sit there in the middle of everything. And Samus. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of trains. And they're not tiny. Now, what's interesting to me about this series, aside from the fact that it's apparently dream trains, I don't really know, is the fact that it's just not super often that Sentai trains are a thing. Yes, it happens. I understand that it happens, but it, it's not a common occurrence. It's also not a common occurrence, really, that I've been able to get my hands on any set of trains that combine to make robots. I know there are a few out there, but this is like pretty much one of the only ones I've got. Anyway, it's an interesting set. Tokyo's rainbow colors are a bit much, but I think as individual trains, they all work out relatively well. Um, the one exception to that being the uh, center part of Dieselo here. And that's because this thing is so absurdly long and doesn't really like connect anywhere. Like you can connect on either end, but if I can turn this without it falling apart, it doesn't have any uh, any connectors in there that'll allow you to link up the trains. I mean, you can no, wait, you can uh, pop this bit off. Show that real quick. So you can pop the front off and kind of connect them, but you still have a pretty big centerpiece that just does not move. And that's kind of lame. I mean, Build Dio does something similar with the bottom portion here, but that doesn't bother me as much. I feel like it's partially because it's not going to pop apart as easily as as uh, Dieselo's section there, because it does not take much for that, that little center bit right there to just come undone. So Dieselo, I mean, there are parts of Dieselo that I think are neat. I'm just going to do this because it's easier. Like, the front of the train for Dieselo actually does look good. And I like the big silver engine bits that are showing through. Some nice detail with the windows and the stripes there in the, uh, the front. So, I mean, it looks good, though I am noticing some blue stuff there. Hmm. Also seeing it on the other side. I'm not entirely sure where that came from. Hmm... I mean, I got this used, so it might just be something that was on there that I didn't realize. Eh. Whatever. It's done, it's done. So, yeah. Dieselo's train is not the greatest, but eh, it's, it's okay. And I'm gonna get to Tokyo's stuff. I just want to get the, the weaker ones out of the way first. And Build Dio. The bottom section of the train is just this big old tread thing that doesn't really have much in the way of features. But then you do have a little bit of a like, command center area there in the front. There are some nice little bits of detail kind of throughout. Of course, the problem is when you've got build dio like this, it's obviously a robot just kind of excitedly jumping in the air and doing the splits. You can split the two sections, so you end up with two train bits. Now this is like even longer than Dieselo's thing, I believe. Okay, it's exactly as long as Dieselo's thing. But again, it's not going to flop apart like that does. But it's also featureless. It has no real section that looks like someone would sit. It's just kind of a giant connector piece. Hence why I typically keep it like this in train mode, just because it's, it makes it look like more of a double-decker train. So that's it for the weak trains. I mean, they're they're fine, but the, the other trains are definitely much better. Uh, Dieselow's leg bits... Not entirely sure what any of these are called, just saying that right now, <laughs> but what the individual trains are called, but uh, leg bit looks okay, has some nice detail on it, and it's got a very kind of mechanical industrial look to it. 
You can't quite tell if this is meant to carry liquids or something else entirely, but it's not a bad looking shape overall. And then this one that is obviously meant as a car transport or vehicle transport, complete with ramp. That is not bad. I mean, the colors are... These two together, they are complementary colors, but when combined with these low, they're kind of... It's, it's okay. I'm moving on to the Tokuger stuff. We've got pink and yellow that are basically the same except the fronts. And these are fine for, like, simple little commuter cars. Um, the paint... It's a little bit weird how the tops of the doors are pink. Or, in this case, the tops of the doors are yellow. Like, I'm not entirely sure if that's supposed to be that way or if it's just how they set the paint up. But detail-wise, I mean, you've got, like, the air conditioning units on top and stuff, so... Some decent detail. And I think this is the electric, the bit that, like, connects to the cables. Allows it to run on the uh, electric lines. And just for the sake of ease, I'm going to leave blue down there, because blue and green are basically the same thing. And again, some good detail, some good breakup of color, so it's not just green or just blue. You've got that gray and white. That gray and white stripe is what ties all of the Tokyo trains together. They all have this kind of gray, white, black setup in terms of color. Of course, one seen from the top, it's just like very stretched out bowl of Skittles. Yeah, again, nice detail overall. And just a quick look at blue so you can see the head of the train is a little bit different. What's interesting about Tokyo's trains, because there are five, we've looked at four of them, blue, green, yellow, and pink all have a more modern kind of commuter rail feel. And then Dieselos have more of like a, I guess you could say like a workhorse type thing, like cargo hauling, fuel, like that kind of thing. Then there's the center train for Tokyo. It's like it's got a more modernish look, but it still calls to mind a steam engine. I mean, I know it's not a steam engine, but like just the look of it, that like cylindrical shape, the little like smokestack looking thing, the lamp, it makes it seem like an older train. And because it seems older, that makes it stand out a bit from the other ones that seem much more modern. Just for like the five for. Tokyo. I mean, I feel like the shape of the red one would fit a little bit better with Diesel O's stuff because it seems like a little more of a little bit more of a workhorse. But I mean, it's fine. It's it ends up being the center of Tokyo. So I think because of that, like you still have a good balance where you've got the two longer commuter, like almost bullet train looking trains for one bit, and then the commuter looking trains for the other bits with like the red one in the center so it all kind of works out anyway that's enough of that we did the size comparisons already and i'm just gonna go straight to robot modes Okay, wow, these uh, <laughs> these do all the Sentai things in a series at once videos are kind of rough on the old joints. But here we have our trio, Tokyo, Diesel O, and Build Dio. They kind of work together just because they're all made up of trains and they look nothing alike. If it weren't for the fact that they were made up of trains, these don't really look like they're necessarily part of the same thing. Um, 
build dio and tokyo kind of slightly because the trains are like brightly colored and have like slightly rounded bits to them these low does not look like a part of this team at all though i think i'm gonna adjust this camera okay that's better got more of like a not quite eye level but definitely not quite as high up their uh viewpoint anyway let's do the size stuff real quick there's our titans turn deluxe and samus so you can see they are they're big i mean they're not huge in terms of sentai but yeah, they are decently sized just in terms of toy i know realistically like sentai mech wise they're actually kind of smaller but still good size and dense plastic too they're definitely there's weight to all of these which i appreciate but of course how could i forget my uh go-to for i'm doing air quotes you can't see standard megazord size the shogun megazord so you can see that uh all things considered they're not that small in just a general general mecha sense like Tokyo is a little bit, or sorry, Tokyo is a little bit shorter, but these two, size-wise, height-wise anyway, fit right in. Still love this thing. All right, so let's go down the list here. Let's start with Diesel O, because we're going to do the weakest from the beginning again. And it's funny, because when I first watched videos of this series, I had no interest in Tokyo, no interest in Build Dio. But I thought Dieselo looked cool. Then I got Dieselo in hand, and my opinion changed. It's his body. It's okay. So aesthetically, I don't have a huge problem with him, but he's just like, it's hard to convey properly just how stiff this mech looks. Like, he seriously is just like a cardboard cutout that's like, dong, 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 dong. Like, that's just, ugh. He looks flat and lifeless, I guess you could say. I mean, Build Dio isn't necessarily, doesn't have much in the way of depth, like physical depth to him, but he's got a little bit more of a natural looking stance, and Tokyo does have a little bit of depth, and also has a more natural looking stance, whereas Dieselo, his legs are a little too close together, like, if these hips kind of came out a little bit more, I think it would look better. And these arms, like, that's as far down as they go. And they just, that just, yeah, <laughs> it looks really, really stiff and silly. Overall, aesthetics-wise, I don't have a huge problem with them. I mean, I think it's, like, the brown doesn't necessarily go with the orange and blue, even though the orange and blue are complementary. But I gotta give them credit for kind of calling back to the blue on this side and the orange on this side and then i also have elements of the orange here that kind of ties it all together and i do like how you've got these gold pipes that go across the shoulders on both sides that are also mirrored in the head crest there and the head itself looks good i like the gold chrome machinery detail there the head while it's a giant box it looks pretty cool it's just it's primarily that stance and the bright orange and blue don't quite go with this brownish color. Also, if you're looking at his head, you can kind of see there's there's some gappiness going on back there that's a little bit a little bit unfortunate. Build Dio, um, I don't think it's a terrible mech, but I'm not too keen on the kind of emergency road worker vibe that he's putting out. I mean, I think it's cute how he's got the the uh, you know reflective suspenders and the hard hat and the goofy crane sticking out of his forehead and the orange and white color combination does give him kind of like a road work kind of or in this case track work i guess kind of feel but it's not i'm not super into it but he does have a better stance than diesel at least i don't mind the track shoulder pads though those are <laughs> those are fine and the way that the legs rotate so you get a little bit of gray in front is nice because it kind of ties into the chest and the sides of the arms there, even though it's a slightly different shade. And lastly, taking a look at Tokyo. What's interesting about this is Tokyo is the one that most directly says 
trains mashed together. Bill Dio doesn't really look too much like trains. I mean, he's got train shapes, if you know what you're looking for. Dieselo, it's pretty much just his legs where you see the uh, the train bits. Tokyo, no, he's he's just train. Train on train on train. I mean, his face even has the uh, train doors. And that is, that is a diminutive face inside of a head that's not terribly disproportionate, but a little bit disproportionate. The interesting thing about Tokyo, did I say, I think I said interesting thing already. So another interesting thing about Tokyo is that color scheme. My goodness. I think people have referred to him as a bunch of Skittles trains. And I mean, I can't disagree with that. There's no, there's no refuting that. He is very colorful and it's fine. I feel like if I had him just as a standalone, I'd be a little disappointed in the rainbow color scheme, but fortunately I got him to combine him with these two, which we'll be taking a look at in short order. But uh, I mean, I will say this. It is very interesting just from a general standpoint. I don't particularly like the color scheme, but I do think it's interesting how all of his colors are mostly separated in vertical slices. So you've just got yellow going top to bottom, blue top to bottom, red, green, pink. There's not a whole lot in terms of colors kind of mixing throughout. I think that's one of the reasons why this color scheme bothers me a lot is that you don't really have red anywhere else. You don't really have green anywhere else. It's just in these vertical lines, which again, it's interesting from like a general uniqueness standpoint, but not really doing it for me on its own. I think the overall shape is nice though. I actually kind of like how he's got these like extra shoulder bits just sticking up. Not too sure about the train front pecs, but eh. Anyway, I think that is going to do it for the individual bots. So let's start with our first combination. Okay, so there we have, I believe, Cho Tokyo. This is uh, interesting. It definitely like bulks him out width-wise. Problem is, it doesn't really do much from the side, so he's still very flat, and that's a little bit kind of, I guess, disappointing. Uh, Color-wise, it helps though. I think like. You've still got the vertical lines of color, but now you've also got these like brown bits on either side and in the center that kind of mixes things up a little bit more. I don't dislike the uh, shoulder gun things, the little uh, leg bulky bulking things are kind of strange, but overall fine. I like the bigger head, but I'm not a huge fan of the face. It's just kind of, I don't know, it's like... The head is huge, but the face seems almost as big, if not only slightly bigger, than Tokyo's face. So he's still got kind of a tiny head inside of a gigantic helmet. The coloring and paint is nice, though. And I do like the, uh, get these a little bit more out of the way. I like the gold kind of train track thing, like head decoration they've got going around the outside there. And just to do a quick comparison, there he's the build dio. So you can see he's not like he's a little bit taller just because of this, but overall is just more just stretched out horizontally. And we'll do our standard Shogun Megazord size comparison again. Not any taller, like just slightly taller, I should say, but it's more just bulking him out. And once again, as always, our Titans Turn Deluxe and Samus. So it's not 
Not taller, just wider. Bulkier. I'm okay with bulkier, but when viewed from certain angles, it seems a little absurd. But I do like this combination more than I like Tokyo or Dieselo individually. And I do think it helps that because those completely different styles of train are mixing together a little bit more, it helps to kind of tie the entire set of toys together better just because they're all kind of mashed into one big thing. So I'll bring Build Dio back in here because we've got one more combination to do. Oh boy, I have to keep pulling back further and further for this guy because he keeps getting taller. So here we have Chocho Tokyo Dio, I believe is the name of this particular combination. And this is what I wanted to get all three of these for because I think they actually look pretty cool combined together. I will say I actually fan mode this a bit to uh, kind of meet more with my personal preferences. So I'll show that after I go through this. But the default mode isn't bad. I mean, it's kind of disappointing that the uh, Cho Tokyo cannons are just, you know, same position and everything. And he's just kind of sitting on <laughs> the bottom half of Build Dio, which is fine, except for the fact that now you've got this big thing sticking out of the back. I kind of wish that that could, like, because you can disconnect the legs. I kind of wish that pelvis area could pop off and go somewhere else on this guy. But I've tried, and I just can't figure out how to do something like that. You do, however, get a nice little spear weapon, and then this extra little orange collar bit, which is, it's fine. Um, I think the problem I have with this combination is a problem, or at least color-wise, I will say, the problem I have with this combination is you've got the only orange that's integrated into the main body of the mech is this piece and this piece here. Everything else is superfluous. Like, he's just sitting on the orange for the feet, and this is just a weapon. It's not really integrated into the mech, which is a shame. And I've seen videos before where people have talked about how disappointing it is that in this mode specifically, because his head's sitting so high up, suddenly his actual shoulders are awkwardly low. And I totally agree with that. There are ways to fudge it through, though, for fan moding, which I do. But, yeah... It's it's fine. I like how this all bulks out. I like how it all integrates. It's just there are little touches that I like to do to it to kind of make it more appealing to me personally. But it does help kind of flesh him out just a little bit more. And when viewing him from the side, this bit here does help to kind of beef him out more so it's not just like he's expanding in one direction. <laughs> Last thing I will say before I get into the fan moding that I like to do. I do like, I'm going to just pop his head off to show this because it'll be easier that way. I like the head with this visor. Like, yeah, his head's still tiny and he's wearing just like a giant helmet. But because the visor is much larger, it kind of masks the fact, no pun intended, that his face is so small. Plus, I just think having that visor there looks cool. And I like how this kind of element, the crane element, just kind of goes up between these two decorative train track pieces. It's a cohesive look I can get behind. And one last thing to do before fan moding. I'm just going to do size comparisons. So there we have our Titans, Fern Deluxe, and Samus. So yeah, now, now this guy's big. It took a while to get there, but he is now big. And of course, Shogun Megazord. And yeah, he's significantly taller and significantly bulkier. And that works for me. It's a combination that I like, but it will become a combination that I love once I mess with this a little bit. So I can do that real quick.
Okay, so that is how I prefer to have Chocho Tokidayo displayed on my shelf. I know it is absolutely not show accurate, but I don't care because it's my toy and I can do what I want with it. What I prefer with this is just starting from the bottom and kind of working up by moving these bits down one clip because there are two clips so I just instead of putting them like the top and the top and the bottom and the bottom I put the top clip or post or whatever in the bottom clip on both of these and that brings this piece down a little bit more so it integrates the shape of this foot add-on into the platform so it makes the legs look a little bit more just at a glance anyway like one solid shape instead of wider legs on top of stilts. I also like to take the yellow and pink arms off and replace them with the orange bits because that way you get more orange integration into the body of the combination. Plus I just think it looks cool having like a sword arm and a big like a big claw arm. The reason that I flip the train heads up is just because I feel like that kind of flows into the shape of the collar a little bit better. So instead of there being like these, these angles kind of cutting up this way, they're going up this way and kind of flowing up into the orange bit here. And then I put the yellow and pink on the back because by flaring them out a little bit, it bulks up the back and kind of makes it look like he either has wings or like heat expelling turbines or exhausts or whatever on his back, which I just think looks kind of neat and Shelf space wise, it doesn't really matter because they stick out about as far as this thing on the back. So it doesn't make a huge difference. And lastly, turn these out so that they form more shoulder pads instead of the, uh, the typical cannon thing. And I like this look a lot. Once I figured this out, I was actually like super happy with having this set because I just think all together in one big weird jumbled mess of trains. This ends up looking very cool. Bring this in a little bit since I think I'm just about done. I think it's time to wrap this up. Not the least of which because my battery is really running dry. <laughs> it's been, this has been a process going through all the different trains and robots and combinations. But yeah, Chocho Toki Daya was very cool. I'm very, very glad I got my hands on this guy and would have been fine with the default mode, but I really like how this looks all together. And, you know, again, it's all relative. You can mix and match things quite readily in a lot of places. So this is just my way of doing things. You are perfectly welcome to do your own thing. And that's kind of the fun of this line. But I do definitely like the shoulder pad effect at the very least, because it does, as was pointed out by... Uh, other videos I've seen, like it does kind of offset the weird shoulder placement. But anyway, yeah, this is very cool. If you're in, you know, if you're in the market, then I'd say try and hunt it down. I think it's worth it. I'm not entirely convinced that any one of the uh, three mecha are worth it on their own, but as one big overall piece, it is definitely very cool. So that is going to do it. I'm going to get going before my battery's completely depleted or before my voice is completely depleted. <laughs> so thank you everybody for watching. As per usual, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Any combination of those three would make me a happy Rob. And remember, art is more than meets the eye.